All right, so welcome back to the day. We're going to do chapter 15 in today's lectures, chapter 15. This is the chapter that we have kind of touched on already. And once again, I made this statement about, I would have moved this chapter maybe forward in the book, but unfortunately you can't move everything forward because by default, something would have to come later. So in this chapter today, we're gonna to talk about liens. And as you recall, a lien is an encumbrance. We touched on it way back earlier when we were talking about encumbrances, we talked about easements. And at that time I told you those were called non-monetary encumbrances. Today, we are going to actually talk about <clears throat> the other side of that, which is called a monetary encumbrance. These are based on the fact that there is a value associated with them. Unlike an easement, the non-monetary actually has no value, so to speak. These actually have a dollar value associated to them. So they are called a monetary encumbrance, but more likely we call them a lien, all right? A lien, and the key part of this chapter that you must understand, is not ownership in a property. <coughs> it's a future interest in ownership. All right, so understand that. It's an interest in ownership, but not actual ownership. Okay, so a lien is a future interest in ownership. And there are two different kinds of liens that we're gonna talk about. Two different kinds of monetary values. Once again, congratulations to Christina, high score. What we're gonna talk about is this thing right now. No, we're not. I fooled myself. We're going to talk about what's called a specific lien first. <clears throat> a specific lien is very commonly attached to only real property. And it's specific to that one type of property or that one piece of property. My specific lien on my property has nothing to do with your specific lien on your property because they are specific to a certain piece of real estate. And it's only real property that they are attached to, okay? So under that, and once again, I've told you, I always kind of picture things like a tree and if you check out those doodles, that's how I kind of have drawn this. So we're going to kind of recapture that drawing here today, because I think if you can think of it in a logical pattern, it will help you. All right. So under that specific lien, we have a voluntary, an involuntary, and then we've got a third one that I just lost my mind uh voluntary involuntary vendors lien all right so think of it like a tree the vendors lien is in its own category because when we get to it you will see that it's kind of both it's kind of a voluntary and an involuntary fashion all right so now the voluntary, all three of these technically, have to gain their value or their monetary value in some manner. And they are, they are assigned their value either in some equitable fashion or some law, which is statutory. So the value of this monetary lien is assigned 
as either some equitable fashion, and equitable means money or fair, all right? <clears throat> the other way that it's assigned a value is some statutory rule or law, and that assigns the value to it. And as you can see, we can play the game that they all are made that way. Equitable and a statutory method. Equitable and a statutory method. All right? So now, one thing I want to talk about is the fact that you can see how this tree lays out and it makes a whole bunch of sense, right? Everybody give me a thumbs up if they see how this tree is laid out so they can see what they're talking about. All right, now, with that being said, I want to change it just a little bit so that it helps you remember. Over here under voluntary, there is no such thing as a voluntary law. There is no such thing as a voluntary law. So under voluntary, there's only equitable. But I drew it there so you guys could see the parity across. And if you remember it like that, it's the easiest way. There's only a fair, voluntary, specific, or equitable voluntary. No such thing as a statutory voluntary. All right? You cannot have a voluntary law. So that one is actually gone. That, they never talk about that one at all. All right? So give me an idea of what would be construed as a equitable, based on money, voluntary, you chose to do it, specific, only attached to one property, lien. What would be a good example? Like a personal motorcycle? A personal motorcycle. No. Your mortgage or your, your mortgage. Yeah. Your mortgage. You chose to go out and get a mortgage. Therefore, it's voluntary. It's equitable because the mortgage is tied to the value of the house. You cannot get a million dollar mortgage on a hundred thousand dollar house legally. So let's let me add that in there. All right. So it's a specific because your mortgage on my, your house has nothing to do with the my mortgage on my house. So it's specific. It's voluntary because you chose to get a mortgage or a lien. You could have paid cash. There's no law that says you can't buy cash. And it's equitable because it's based upon the value of the money you borrowed from the bank to buy that house. So it is a equitable, voluntary, specific lien. Now, I'm telling you now and warning you, on the exams, they are not going to say your mortgage. They're going to call it a voluntary specific lien because they want you to understand, once again, remember how can they get two questions out of you? This is how, by not calling it a mortgage, by calling it a voluntary specific lien, and then you have to answer the question, you actually have to know what a voluntary specific lien is to answer the question, all right? Now, a lot of times you'll just hear it called voluntary specific, because since there's no statutory, it always is equitable. So an equitable voluntary lien is the same as a voluntary lien because they are, there is no statutory, it's always equitable. And that's what I was just telling you a minute ago. There is no voluntary statutory law. So there is no column under there for that one. There is an involuntary law or an involuntary lien. This is something that someone does to you involuntary, 
but it's still attached to your house that's specific and it's made by rule or law what would a, a statutory involuntary specific lien be like a judgment against you that's no we're, we'll get to that but that's not it okay this only attaches to your real property is it your taxes exactly real estate taxes real estate taxes are a statutory involuntary lien all right specific it's all your taxes have nothing to do with my taxes involuntary because someone did it to you statutory because the value is determined by state law so a statutory involuntary specific lien are your real estate taxes that's the best example now under equitable these would be like credit cards. We're not gonna talk about those either in this course, okay? The third one is called a vendor's lien. It has broken out separately because it's kind of both. You voluntarily chose to do something, didn't pay for it, and now someone has had to do an involuntary uh, action against you. It too gains its value on either equitable or statutory. The equitable version is what they call, anybody ever heard of a mechanics lien? A mechanics lien? A mechanics lien is when you have chosen to have something done but didn't pay for it so now the court has forced a payment on you and that payment that they forced upon you is of the value of whatever you had done that's why it's equitable so a couple things first of all the word mechanic you have to understand this comes from old English law that means anybody who has repaired your property. This is not like a car mechanic. Lawn care company can file a mechanics lien. Your home, uh, uh, HVAC, a plumber, an environmental company that does something for your property, a pest control agent. Those all are mechanics by the old English definition because they have repaired your property. It is not a car mechanic. It's anybody can get a mechanics lien. And that lien is based on the value of whatever repair they have done to your property. So you call an HVAC company, <clears throat> they come out and they fix your air conditioner for $10,000. You don't pay them. They are forced to then go to a court and get a mechanics lien or file a mechanics lien. <clears throat> it would be equitable because the amount they file for is $10,000. They can't file for a hundred thousand. It's equitable. It's what you owe. That's fair. The word equitable means fair or money. All right. So that is an equitable vendor's specific lien. Can anybody have an idea on what a statutory vendor's lien would be? It gains its value from a rule or a law. All right, it's a hard one, I get it. The best example is your homeowners association. Your homeowners association. That value is a rule that the HOA came up with. 
every now I, here's where it gets confusing because I know they're going to tell you a number. Everybody owes 150 a year, but that was a rule that made that number. It's not based on any value. It's not based on your hundred thousand dollar house or my hundred and ten thousand. Everybody pays the same thing because the rule says everybody pays one hundred and fifty dollars a year. All right. So an HOA would be a statutory. It's a rule or a law that was made that set the value. It's not based on the price of the house or the price of the work. 